Hello, Vincent here, and in this 10th episode, I discuss the why and the how of getting into Epic 40k here at Bunker 6. So, you like Warhammer 40k? Great. But you might be looking for something a little more compact in these interesting times. Or perhaps you're trying to rekindle some nostalgia, or quite possibly, you're just looking for a little change of scenery. Well, Epic 40k might just be for you. Epic is a 6mm version of Warhammer 40k, and has been around since the 80s, like me, which is pretty cool. So let's break things down and see if Epic is the right fit for you, and if so, Let's go over my thoughts and things you can potentially do to take the plunge into this rather interesting side of the hobby. Let us first begin by thinking about some of the good reasons for trying Epic 40k. Number one, the most obvious reason to me is nostalgia. Epic 40k is pretty old at this point, so I suspect many people are most likely returning to Epic rather than discovering it for the first time. Come to think of it, Bunker 6 only exists for these exact feelings of nostalgia I have for Epic 40k. You may, like myself, have just been a bit too young to fully grasp the hobby, or perhaps you knew Epic very well, but life just ended up getting in the way, as so often happens. Sometimes reconnecting with our past positively, though, can be a great thing to do spiritually and mentally. Personally, I feel I have a duty to finish what I started with Epic 40k all those years ago, when I was a mere 11 years old, and that could be the same for you. The great thing is, due to Epic 40k being so small, it can be a pretty low cost and low risk investment. This is of course all dependent on how far down the rabbit hole you wish to go. Like anything though, Epic 40k can get expensive, and as the years roll on and things become hard to find, the cost of certain Epic 40k pieces can spiral rapidly. But if you start small and have a solid direction of where you want to go with things, Epic can be a light toll on your wallet and your time due to its small scale. It still has the advantage of sharing the same law and universe as 28mm Warhammer 40k, but without so much plastic to paint. Brilliant. Number two. Another reason for trying Epic 40k could be if your interest is waning at times in your hobby, or perhaps you need a change of pace. Well, I believe Epic 40k is a great way to experiment with a new side of your hobby, but without having to take too much of a commitment on. Sometimes making a major change within this hobby can be pretty expensive and time consuming. But jumping into Epic though can be a very simple process most of the time. This transition can cure that itch for change without, say, having to get into buying a new 28mm scale army and having to deal with all the drama that that process can bring with it. Number three, alternatively you could actually be a first timer. Maybe you just want to try your hand at a little bit of painting and dip your toe into the lore without going crazy in a GW store with a credit card. For me, even the prospect of painting my first Primaris Marine when I came back into the hobby after a 20 year hiatus was pretty stressful. You see, I always set myself unrealistic goals and I wanted my first paint job after 20 years of not painting to look like the box art. This is a paralyzing experience as I'm sure you can imagine. The advantage with Epic though is it can be a great workaround for those kind of feelings. Let's take something like a metal Lehman Russ Epic 40k tank. This tiny tank is a great thing to work with for a first timer, for if you hate your paint job, you can easily strip the model entirely and start again. This is not so easy with plastic models, and if you're anything like me, it stresses me out knowing there is no turning back sometimes with such expensive pieces of plastic. Yes, you can strip plastic, but due to having to use less harsh chemicals than you will with stripping metal, this process can be cumbersome and slow, and not necessarily all that effective at times. The point is, the barrier for entry is much lower with, say, painting a 6mm scale Lehman Rust tank, rather than its 28mm equivalent. The metallic paint you would consume from painting just a single track of a 28mm scale Lehman Rust could paint an entire Imperial Guard Legion's worth of tank tracks in 6mm scale. Number four, time saving. This is a pretty obvious point, but time is in short supply for us all. So why not try and keep things light at first by working on some epic scale? Painting takes a fraction of the time and you can still have some pretty special looking models at the end. I'm looking at you, Von Krieg Studios. Reason number five, 
Maybe you're already into Epic, but you want to spread the word to, say, your kids or a significant other. Epic 40k is a great gateway avenue, for full-scale Warhammer can get expensive and slightly intimidating to many a newcomer. To be fair, the hobby in general for a newcomer can be quite overwhelming, from learning about the lore to all the tools and all practicing required to produce great paint jobs. So why not let your newcomers, young and old, try something a little less overwhelming, like a piece of Epic? Many basic techniques can still be learned on a smaller scale, from priming, base coating, brush control, glazing, and the application of decals. Reason number six. How about this for a reason? The Army Mini Army. Let me explain. You know how rich people sometimes have a scale model version of their supercar that they already own? Well, why not do the same thing for a Warhammer army that you own? Recreating your Astra Militarum army in epic scale would be an awesome thing to show off to your friends, in my humble opinion. Reason number seven. Finally, the only other thing that comes to mind is just being a collector. For me, at least, it is nice to have these little models in plastic tubs or on display around me. It's comforting and enjoyable just to hold them in the hand, the metal models especially. The weight of them is something that is really satisfying, and if you're a weirdo like me, you may find that sort of thing worth the investment too. Okay, now we have gone over some reasons why we may want to get into Epic, now let us move on to how to get into Epic. Number one, if you were to play Epic, which version would you play? There are quite a few editions of the Epic Battle system that span over three decades. As to not make this video any longer than it really needs to be, I recommend clicking the link in the description, which will take you to an Epic 40k wiki page, where you will be given much more detailed information into all of the editions. Bear in mind, finding some of the rules in the earlier editions can be difficult due to additional rules and FAQs being spread out through random issues of White Dwarf. There are also wonderful online resources such as NetEpic and NetEA, which are run by a dedicated community of Epic players and collectors where new rules and support for the game has continued on after GW had abandoned the game. Links once again will be in the description. Question number two. What army do you want to collect? There are a few armies to choose from, but sadly due to Epic support being wound up around 2004-2005, there are a lot of modern models that will not have been replicated in the 6mm scale. If you don't mind 3D printing though, you can start printing any army you want if you know how and where to obtain the printable files. Number 3. Which edition would you want to collect for? If you are not concerned about collecting for a specific edition, then this point won't matter to you. I think collecting for a specific edition is a good way to stay focused and stay on target with Epic, as there is so much initial content that can be consumed, from the rules to the models. I think that starting small, no pun intended, will make the likelihood of you staying interested in Epic much more likely. Yet, some might say to just collect whichever models you like, no matter the edition. I don't dispute this, I just think that at first, you should manage what you collect and which game to play. If you are just in for collecting and have no intention of playing any of the games, then collect whatever you like. Hopefully now you have answered some of these questions, you can begin the buying, trading and or printing process. If you've already started amassing a ton of 6mm plastic though, then not to worry. Hopefully my earlier thoughts can help you come up with a plan of sorts for your Epic 40k wants and needs. One of the first things you may want to explore are proxies. Proxies are models that have been created to represent their GW equivalents. I'm not sure on the legality of these things, and I know GW are on a good one with their IP protection at the moment, so I'm not going to get anyone into trouble. Just Google Epic 40k proxies and a few things should come up. Aside from proxies, the most modern solution and probably the quickest way of getting into Epic 40k is 3D printing. Despite the upfront costs you will incur from purchasing a 3D printer and its accoutrement, from the cleaning curing machine to the resin tools and cleaning products, 3D printing would still be the cheapest way in which to build a large Epic 40k army, along with the bonus of being able to print any additional terrain you may desire. If you are new to 3D printing, YouTube is a fantastic resource for researching 3D printing. I recommend resin for the miniatures and a filament printer for terrain due to the costs. Epic 40k purchases can add up quickly, especially with the addition of shipping costs. So if you have a 3D printer and you know how to use it, you could have, say, an Epic 40k Heresy army printed in no time at all. Just find some good-looking STL files on the web that have already been designed for Epic 40k to print, 
or print up some scaled down 28mm models instead. What you do with your printer is none of my concern, but if it means keeping Epic going, I support it fully. Moving on. If you're a bit of a purist and a fanatical collector like myself, then sadly you are going to most likely be taking the scenic route to an Epic army. If you know what you're looking for though, then it is time to set up a multitude of eBay alerts for items that you are interested in buying. If you are outside of the UK or Europe, you may want to check the European versions of eBay, eBay.fr for France, to eBay.co.uk for the UK, and so on. For this is where you may potentially find more Epic 40k models. Yes, you'll be paying in pounds or euros, not only for the model, but also for that annoying international shipping. But if you befriend someone in a Facebook group or have a family member living in Europe or the UK, then you can just have it delivered to their address and have them ship a bunch of things to you at once, which can bring down the shipping costs dramatically. This is my method. Despite living in the US, I have everything I buy from Europe and the UK shipped to a friend's place in London, where my friend will eventually ship me a box of all the stuff I bought over a few months in one go. One last point for a more efficient browsing experience when it comes to eBay is a site called PickClick. P-I-C-C-L-I-C-K. Just add .com or .co.uk and so on after typing PickClick into the address bar depending on where you are based and depending which region you are trying to explore. The site presents eBay in a much more manageable way where you can choose how many items are previewed at any one time on the page instead of having to perpetually be scrolling. Also, a nice touch is that whenever you return to the site, it saves 10 rows of previous search terms that you have used, and if you search most recent, you can easily see new items have been added much more efficiently than you can on, say, eBay. It has saved me a ton of time over the years. Please bear in mind, though, that this only works on a web browser on a phone or computer. There is sadly no app for PickClick. Facebook groups are a great resource for Epic 40k trading and sales too. Just type in Epic 40k in the Facebook search tab and a few groups will come up that have been excellent in my experience. I've snagged some amazing deals in these groups and you could too. Okay, let's start buying and bidding. Don't be surprised if it takes a very long time for certain items to show up on eBay. Buy something common and cheap at first to pass some time. Don't forget to submit offers for things if the option is there on eBay listings. You can also wrangle deals sometimes if you buy bulk or multiple listings in one go from a single seller, and you should be able to get the additional bonus of combined shipping if you request it. Don't forget that junk models need love too. You can get a ton of Space Marine infantry for dirt cheap if they're already based and painted poorly. I recommend buying a lot of junk epic models and leaving them in a tub of Dettol if you're in the UK or Windex if you're in the US if they are plastic for about two weeks and scrub the paint off with a toothbrush. Ultrasonic cleaners can somewhat help speed up this process too. If you purchase anything metal, you are golden though. Use whatever harsh paint peeling agent you like, just be in a well ventilated area wearing gloves and goggles. Oven cleaner and acetone can work pretty well for most things and it's fast compared to stripping plastic. This might sound like sacrilege, but I recommend removing models from the square bases if you are playing anything after second edition, as painting the models stuck in the middle of that unit base can be very tricky. I also personally prefer the rectangular bases. Removing models from the bases can be time consuming, but in my opinion is worth the long term results. With a pair of hobby clippers, you will want to start by separating the individual models by clipping them apart from the base. Cut into the base itself and avoid damaging the models themselves. Once you have done that, you'll want to pinch the upside down model between your thumb and index finger and with a Dremel start to sand the black plastic of the base from the underside of the model. I use the sand roller attachment for this task. Once you hit the grey of the model itself, you obviously will want to stop sanding. You should then be able to simply twist the additional black plastic from around the edges of the infantry base with your hands or clippers. Be aware that the legs of these old models can be very fragile and become brittle, especially after paint stripping, and can snap very easily if not handled with the utmost care. So take your time. Do not do any of this over a sink or a cluttered trash can. You do not want to have to dig in trash or a waste disposal unit for the model if you drop it. And yes, I'm speaking from experience. Also look out for eBay lots. Buying models in lots will be the cheapest way just after 3D printing. Buying models individually adds up real quick, so if you can, avoid it. You can always sell and or trade any of the excess models that you do not require from a lot. Now, sketchy third parties are also an option if you can find them, just be sure that they can be trusted with your money. 
Recasting may be IP theft, but if GW are not going to fulfill the demand, then more power to those that will. If you want to collect Tyranids, I would suggest going straight to 3D printing or a Facebook trading group. The prices for Epic Tyranids on eBay is a little bit out of control. Space Marines, Imperial Guard and Orcs are the easiest models that you will find on eBay. So you have your army printed or purchased, primed and hopefully painted. Now you want to get some games in. Well, this is where things become very subjective. There is no silver bullet for this and everyone's social status and sphere of influence is wildly different. But the first thing to do would be to start local. If you have a gaming group that you are part of, then maybe see if there's anyone that would be interested in trying Epic. You may need to build up two armies in order to make it easier to introduce a fellow gamer to Epic for the first time though. As previously mentioned, maybe reach out to friends, family and offspring to see if they would be interested in learning about Epic 40k. Try and hit home the lower barrier of entry from my previous points mentioned. It'll just make it a little bit more inviting. Ask in Facebook groups if there are any players in your area. There may not be, but that is something that you may be able to change. So, in conclusion, I think Epic 40k is great. It's a lovely parallel path to the 28mm scale version of the hobby. It shares the same law without the hefty barrier of entry. You can play in a giant city as opposed to a small block of ruined buildings. Control an army that fits in the palm of your hands. And build a gaming table that really helps set the scene of a fleshed out picture of the universe on a grand scale. Look, is Epic going to be for everyone? Absolutely not. But nothing is. But if you feel a spark of interest, then just jump in and see if there is anything there that stands out to you. Well, thanks for watching to the end and I hope you learned something new. Drop a like on the video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more epic content pop up in your feed. If you have any additional questions regarding this video, please leave a comment below. I try and respond to everyone. Also, if you have any additional points that I may have missed, which I'm sure I did, please add them in the comment section too. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, stay safe out there. Bunker 6 out.